Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm just going for a walk by the Langoflin Canal. Now, I'm currently in England. This is the Langoflin Canal that goes up to Langoflin in Wales. It is also known as the Langoflin branch of the Shropshire Union branch. Now, as I say I'm currently in England, the reason I say that is because very soon we're going to be in Wales. We're going to cross the border from England into Wales. The, and we're going to do it some, some quite exciting way. We're going to do it 70 feet above the river Carriog Valley. Now, you're about to, you might be able to hear water below you. You're going to see it any second. We're just, the, here's the bank disappearing. You can hear water. I think there must be an overflow from the canal. And here in front of us is the aqueduct, the Cherk aqueduct, that takes us 70 foot above the Carriog Valley. There's the river down there. Now, if you want, you can actually cross the border higher than 70 feet. You can cross it 100 feet. Because adjacent to us, we have Cherk Railway Viaduct, which um, is on the railway line that runs from Shrewsbury up towards Wrexham. So obviously we're now on the aqueduct. You can see the river Carriog down there. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apologies if I'm not quite pronouncing that right. So I'd say about now, I'm kind of halfway between England and Wales. If you look over there, just say welcome to England and now if I walk a little bit further we are now above the fields so I think it's fair to say now we must be in Wales. So this aqueduct was built by Thomas Telford. The foundation stones were laid on the 17th of June 1796 and it was finished in 1801 and it stood on its own dominating the valley for almost 50 years until they then built the railway which was added in 1848 so then from then on you've had this these two viaducts or one viaduct one aqueduct together so when you see it from a distance over there you could be mistaken for thinking it's one fancy structure that incorporates both but it is there's a good 30 odd feet not only height above us but from here perhaps a bit more than 30 feet to the railway aqueduct so We've almost crossed it. I believe there's about 10 arches on the aqueduct. When we get to the other end, I'll stand so you'll be able to get a bit of a view of the aqueduct. Looking back, now we have crossed the border and we're in Wales. I might catch a train later on over the viaduct. And um, whether I'll do it today, I don't know. But then it'd be quite fun one day to say you've come into Wales on a canal and gone back on the train. And what I should do is I'll do it on a barge one day. That would be really fun to do the border crossing on a barge back on the train. I think today I'm just going to stick to walking. So we've now come to the other side of the aqueduct. Now if you look as the abutment curves around, you get a really nice view of both the aqueduct and the viaduct. It's a shame a train didn't come along, but um, they're not that frequent on this line. It is double track, but I thought we won't wait forever just in case one we might be waiting for a long time if you have a look at the aqueduct arch you can see they are actually slightly sloped to give it more strength now after the aqueduct as if that wasn't fun enough there's then a tunnel chirk tunnel so what we're going to do now is we're going to go from 70 foot above ground to i'm not quite sure how many feet below ground we're going to walk through this incredibly dark looking tunnel. There's actually a boat coming through it, so it might not be quite as dark. I haven't quite decided whether I'll talk all the way through or not. I might cut the film and then start again at the end. So there, here, we get quite a nice view. You can see the reflection of the viaduct. There's obviously this big area here because you can only have one boat on the aqueduct at a time. You can only have one boat in the tunnel at a time. So we're just approaching the tunnel. It's about a quarter of a mile long, so it's quite long. Um, I might actually tell us here. Oh, that's the width. So it's six foot nine inches, Chirk Tunnel. Not gonna try and pronounce it in Welsh, but that's how it is. Um, let's go through. It's got number 23. So whether that means it's tunnel or, or it counts as a bridge number 23, I'm not sure. If anyone knows, do comment and tell me. There's also a railway tunnel, but it's much shorter. The railway tunnel's just next to this one, 
and it only the railway tunnel only really goes under the road. This tunnel though actually goes underneath the railway. So when we emerge to land on the other side, we will not only be somewhere completely different, but we will be on the other side of the railway line. Now it's very narrow in here. I'm glad you can't really see it, but there is a fence. Um, and if you I'm gonna let you look through the tunnel that way, you can see the light of the boat. I will pause the camera and walk through because there's not a lot to show you. Looking back that way, you can see the tunnel. So I'm going to pause the camera now and I'll show you a bit more when we get further down. So I'm now approximately halfway through Chirk Tunnel. I'm probably directly below the railway. Now, as I said a moment ago, there's a boat coming towards us. Just look at the sight that's making. I just passed some other people. It's so narrow in here. I had to duck right down into the corner. In fact, we can use the light of the boat just to give you an idea just how small the towpath is. So if someone came past, I had to get right down like this in order for them to go past. So just watch this boat go past, because that is quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there goes the boat. It's now pitch black and I cannot see a thing. Keep walking into the wall, so I'll pause the camera again and I'll talk more when we get to the end. I think I underestimated a bit by saying we're halfway through. It looks like it goes on forever, so see you at the end. So the end of the tunnel finally beckons. That was quite um, a long and obviously very dark experience. It reminded me a bit when I walked through the Chill Compton Tunnel on the old Somerset and Dorset Railway, but obviously had a lot more room to walk and there was more lights. It wasn't quite as narrow. As we get to here, give you another idea see just how narrow the towpath is and bearing in mind you've got hardly any headroom because obviously you've got the tunnel itself but when you come out here it's almost like you've come into a different world everything seems so bright and you know it doesn't feel like we're in Wales now it feels like we're on a leafy section of the Grand Union Canal in Hertfordshire it's so different so we've come under the railway so the railway station must be up there somewhere so obviously we will not finished the video without having a look at that. There's a tunnel behind us. So that is what we've come through, a quarter of a mile of complete darkness, except for when that boat came. And it was interesting how once the boat had gone, how suddenly pitch black it was. There's a bit more, same bit of info on the Chirk tunnel. I'm now gonna head up the slope, up to the railway station, so we'll have a look at the railway station and I'll tell you about another little interesting railway that used to run from here. So up we go, up the slope and out of the canal's cutting. By the way, up there is Chirk Castle. We're not going to go there today, but perhaps at some point next year we will. It's a lovely castle, it's National Trust, it's got a lovely garden, so I think that's one for the summer. So perhaps next year we'll do Chirk Castle. So here we are now, we're above the mouth of the tunnel. And as I said, we're gonna go and have a look at the railway station. I'm just gonna show you this view, looking along the canals, cutting from above the tunnel. Almost perfect reflection. Water's very still today. And as I said, up there is Chirk Castle, which we'll do next year. Now let's go out here onto the lane and we're gonna go and have a look at the railway station. So we have come as I said, the line of the tunnel is about that way, underneath the railway line. So when we get to the railway station, which is just here, if we have a look down here, you'll see there's what appears to be Sue's Railway. Indeed it is. That is the old Glen Valley Tramway platform. It used to run from here up the valley. Now, it opened in 1873 and it closed in the 1930s I believe from competition for buses. The buses used to always run just ahead of the trams or trains. It was like a steam hauled train but with tramway like engines so the railway didn't really you know it couldn't really survive it's unfair but there is a group out there today who wishes to reopen it and best of luck to them I think it'd be great to see it reopened. So you can see where it went, it went under that bridge there that's obviously the main line it has gone off in a, turned off that way up the valley 
There was also, there were various branches to quarries, and there was one that would have gone underneath the aqueduct and the viaduct um, as a goods branch, but the passenger trains would have ran, as you can see, up that track bed. Some of the carriages have survived. They've ended up at the Tamiflin Railway, and maybe if they ever reopen it, they'll um, come back and get to run here again. I'll just let you see the railway line while we're here. So, as I said about there being a railway tunnel, you can just see the railway tunnel up there, and directly on the other side of the railway tunnel is the aqueduct and the viaduct. And if we have a look on this side, you can see the railway station. It's a bit strange, they've actually got the footbridge here and the road bridge next to each other. And if you wonder why there's loads and loads of people hanging around, that's because there's a steam train coming through. Isn't that a coincidence? I happen to come here on the day a steam train's going through. So obviously I'm going to include that in the video before I go. So we'll just walk down onto the station platform and uh, we'll finish the video down there. There's also a new bridge since the last came. Well, last came, it was only this foot bridge. They've now put an accessible one in. There's no lifts here, but there's a ramp, so the station is now fully accessible, which is good. Well, if you have a look over there, it says Glen Valley Tramway Trust, Restoration Glen Valley Tramway, Phase 1, coming here soon. So we shall certainly look forward to seeing that. I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen, but when it does, we'll be back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hang around at this at Chirk Railway Station and wait for the arrival of the steam train. So we'll just, I'm just going to walk all the way up here, just because we can. It's a nice uh, flower, there's even a, a bear made out of box hedging. It's not actually box hedging, it's a type of hedge. It looks really nice. So, yeah, very attractive railway station. And well, if you wonder what that is, that's the Cronus Pan work, so they make chipboards. So you see a lot of log trains coming. Oh, there is actually a train coming. Not a steam train, just a... Um, I nearly say Arriva Trains Wales, but they're not that anymore. They're Transport for Wales, one of their Class 175s. So we'll see that arrive. And then I'm going to hang around and await the arrival of the steam train. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And do please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your grandparents, tell anyone else you know who you think might be interested. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Isn't it? Yeah. Better than the one we signed off with, isn't it?